Hey, welcome everybody. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to everybody watching online and all of you outside. This is a good time to come on in. You're going to get to see all of that beautiful artwork out there. It'll be there after service as well. We are here this morning to celebrate the goodness of God. Amen? Amen. He's been good to us all week. We've had a campus full, families, kids. It's been a week of VBS. It's been a special week and it culminates with a special Sunday. And we've gathered for one reason. Lift up the name of Jesus, the Son of God, the King of Kings. That's why we're here. Amen? We're going to do it maybe a little different style. We're going to have the kids in with us today. We're going to celebrate. We're going to sing some songs that you know, some songs that they know. But here's what, we're all singing to the same person. Amen. We're singing to him. We're giving him praise. Would you stand with me this morning? Oh, yeah. Kids, I'm going to need a lot of help out of you today. Are you ready? Come on. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this morning. God, we thank you for your goodness. God, as we gather from our homes, as we gather outside, as we gather in this place, we gather for one reason, it's to lift up your name. We are people who are proud of our God. All that you've done in our life, we are so proud of who you are. We're so grateful for what you have done. Jesus, you are our hero. You are our king. And we want to live lives that honor you. And so we're thankful for all you've done. So would you receive our our worship, our our singing, our praise from our hearts today in Jesus' name. If you agree with that prayer, let's do a big amen. Amen. Let's go. Amen. All right, everyone. Well, we're going to do our our Mega Skills Camp song today. So if you know the motions, I want to see all of my campers dancing along. If you don't know them, that's okay. We have dancers on the stage. You can watch and follow. All right, so let's do it together. Here we go.
who I know already knows everything about me. That I can't surprise, that I can't, that I can't miss because you're just always there, God. Right now, God, I just pray that you would, um, you would just fill us with that sense of your joy right now, God. Remind us that you are here. Remind us how much you love us. Thank you, Father, for being so incredibly good. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, The Bridge. I am so happy that you guys are here. If you would, take a moment, turn to your neighbor, introduce yourself to someone you don't know, say hello to your friends from Mega Skills Camp, and we'll come back together in just a moment. The sun's not worried about the winter. sure if it's safe to be up here or not, but welcome to Mega Skills Camp Sunday. We are so glad to have you with us. For those of you who may not know what you walked into, uh, welcome to just a little taste of the crazy chaos we enjoyed for a whole week together um, as we worked with kids and students on Shipwreck Island discussing how we share the love of Jesus here, there, and everywhere because he never leaves us and he's always with us in every situation. So we had such a great week and we're so glad that we just get to share a portion of it with you today. And if you are new, welcome. Um, just give us a little leeway this morning. Not every week will be quite this entertaining. Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe. Maybe. Uh, Maybe we can talk Pastor Ryan into a song and dance next week or something. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll work on that. We'll work on that. But if you are visiting with us for the first time, thank you so much for being here. Many of you may be here because your kids got to enjoy the week of Mega Skills Camp. 
Others may have just walked in, and you're not even sure what you walked into. So welcome to you as well. Um, if you didn't figure it out yet, we love to have fun. We love our children, um, and we believe in investing in the next generation in the best way possible. And so that's what we get to celebrate today, is all the hard work that went into that. If you are with us for the first time today, I'd love for you to just step right outside in the foyer at the end of service, um, right outside on the plaza. You can meet Sydney, and she is one of our team members, and she has a little gift for you, as well as she can fill you in with any information on what a normal week might look like for you, if you're curious about that. Um, as well as to just greet you and say hello, because we're so glad you took the time to be with us this morning. No matter how you got here, we're glad you're here. So thank you for being with us. Just a couple of quick announcements of things going on. There's a ton still to come today. Uh, when we're done in here, there is some delicious food happening right out in on the plaza. Um, that is free to everybody if you'd like to donate toward our uh, Mega Skills Missions Project, which you'll hear more about later. Uh, you are welcome to do that. Um, but the food is on us today. Just a big celebration of what's been happening and what's going on. Um, there will be carnival games, very similar to what the kids played all week downstairs. Tractor rides. How many of you kids did not get to go on the tractor? Wah, wah. Yeah. Well, today is your, Ryan, put your hand down. No. Okay, fine. You can have a ride. Adults, too. How about that? Everyone can get a ride on the tractor today. Um, everybody will get a chance to do tractor rides in the middle parking lot. It's going to be a great time. Plus, you can see all the skills and a little taste of what they did throughout the week. So please take a look. Look around. The Jacaranda store, which will help uh, raise more money for our missions project is right out in the foyer. So lots going on, lots of reasons to hang out and say hello and meet a few new faces, okay? Encourage you to stay and do that. We also have um, coming up this Saturday, July 29th, we have a very family-friendly activity. We will be doing a paint for Kenya. And what that is is you'll have the opportunity to come together and be led by a professional artist in creating a landscape. We're going to take those landscapes with us to Kenya. And while we're there, we're going to be delivering them to homes that don't really have much in their homes. They're really just more um, boxes. Um, and we're going to leave them with a beautiful piece of artwork made by, hopefully, you. Okay? Um, made by you with just a scripture verse to remind them how much God loves them. It's going to be a great gift for us to leave. It's a great way for you to partner with us in going to Kenya. That's happening this Saturday, July 29th. And I know some of you guys in this room are thinking, I can't do it. You can do it. Bring the family and come. It's going to be a great time for all of us. Um, OC Brush Hour will be with us. They're going to lead us through the painting. So you don't even, are, you don't even have to be creative. You don't. You just need a hand, and you have one right there. He had a hand. We're set to go. It's going to be a great time. So please do consider being a part of that. We're going to receive our morning tithes and offerings at this time, and if you would just go ahead and bow your heads and pray with me. And, Lord, we're just thankful for all the ways you provided this week, um, from providing the right helpers and the right leaders to providing a way for everyone to be here and to be together, for taking care of each and every detail, um, and, Lord, for meeting us, even in the difficulties in our life this week. We're so grateful for all that you do. We choose in this moment to just give back to the work of your kingdom, um, a part of our tithe, that which you um, have so graciously given to us. We give back. We ask, Lord Jesus, that it would go for the work of the kingdom here in our community, in our church, in our homes, and abroad, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for being a part. Any other information you might want to know about what's going on at our church, you can find at thebridgersm.info, um, and that'll give you all the upcoming things. I've only hit a couple. There are many, 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 many more. Okay? All right. Well, how many of you would like a few numbers of what happened over this last week? Yeah? All right. We had 200, over 280 registrations, seeing an average of 250 students here every day. Yeah, that's super exciting. It was a great turnout, a great group, led by, and this number makes my heart happy, 181 volunteers. Yeah. 
Ooh, that is, by the way, the most we have ever had, and it made life so beautiful. <laughs> so if you volunteered this week, could you just stand up real quick? If you were volunteering this week, just a quick stand up. We want to celebrate you kids. Clap for those leaders of yours that did such a good job all week. That's right. Thank you. They served in everything from registration to providing snacks to taking care of child care for us, to leading your skills, hosting up here. The band you saw on the stage this morning was also with us all week. So lots of amazing ways that people participated. And it was such a good time and so much fun to get to celebrate. Um, I think we had something like 25 Band-Aids. That's pretty minor when you think about it. Uh, and about 350 popsicles is what it took to get through the week. So... There's a few numbers for you, but maybe the most important and the most valuable number of all, we saw over 80 children make a dedicated decision for the first time to Christ, to letting him live in their life and guide and lead them. And we had many, many more who committed, raised their hand and committed to saying, I want to share the love of Jesus here, there, and where, kids? everywhere. That's right. Thank you so much. So it was a wonderful time. And I just want you to know those of you who gave financially, those of you who prayed, those of you who were physically able to be with us, thank you. Um, all It takes all of that to make a week like this happen. And it was so good and so fabulous. And most of us are still standing. So that's the really good news. Um, but how many of you would like to just see a little recap of what the week looked like? Yeah, let's do it. Hey, what's up? Slide this down. is Mega Skills Camp Slide 2023. Down oh. Shipwreck oh. Island. Oh. This for you, Mega Skills. <laughs>
week, this week was so awesome. Uh, my name is Christy. Uh, I am the early childhood director here at the bridge. Usually I'm in back in that hallway with all of our little ones. So if you don't recognize me, that's who I am. Um, but this week I had the incredible privilege of overseeing all of our skills. So we had art and crafts and two different classes of cooking, gardening, woodworking, technology, pottery, what did I miss? Basketball and, <laughs> and survival skills. Yes, thank you. <laughs> there, was, there is one more that I haven't mentioned yet because uh, I'm getting to them because they have something very special to show us. Um, but all of our skill, they, our, our skills leaders killed it this year. There was so much going on. Like, it was, it was crazy. Like, there was, it, I, I don't even, like, have words for how awesome it was to see these people who are, you know, they're, they're just regular people like you and me that came in and gave their time and all of their effort and prep ahead of time to make sure that you kids had a fantastic week full of so much fun, right? You guys had fun, right? Oh, come on. <laughs> you guys had fun, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so the last skill that I didn't mention yet was karate. And karate is going to come on up, and they have something super cool to show us. <laughs> so they're going to come on up. <laughs> Everybody was kung fu fighting. Those kids were fast as lightning. And practice was a little bit frightening. But they fought with expert timing. There were funky China men from funky Chinatown. They were chopping the
Awesome job, Karate. You guys killed it. Nice job. Uh, that, so that was some of what they were doing. Every time I went in there, there was lots of hi-yahs and stuff going on. It was super cool. Um, one of the other, th so that, they were up here. Um, but all of our skills have a table out on the plaza to show off some of the other awesome things they did. There are art projects. There's craft projects. Uh, there might be some things that got cooked this week that taste delicious. Maybe. I don't remember if there actually are or not. But there's definitely stuff to look at. Um, you'll have the opportunity. If you want, you can give a go at the pottery wheel um, and test and see how that works. Um, but there's there's basketball court down down below, um, and we lo would love to have you all come check out all the tables. Um, one of the other things that we did this week was we focused on a missions project, and so we have a video uh, to tell us more about that. With Kenya having a population of 40 million people, we have 60% or even more living in slums. The name Jacaranda itself, it's a name of a tree. So Jacaranda's ministry is this whole tree planted with Christ being the center of it all. And then we have very many branches. It's a holistic ministry. We care for the whole person, physically through Jacaranda care, the church, that brings to life the transforming word of, of Christ. Jacaranda creations that gives them something to work with their hands, to put food on the table. We have Jacaranda kids that handles the sponsorship to have these kids go to school to acquire knowledge. So really, Jacaranda is alive. It's a person. I, could, I wish I could call it a person. So we come in with a basic need, let's say food. That's when you introduce Jesus, and after that, you, you get to know what can they do, what are the, some of the skills they can learn, teach them a skill. So they learn this skill, and after learning this skill, they're able to get money out of it, money that will be able to feed them, pay rent, and even buy clothing for them. Then for the children, we also pray and get a sponsor for the child. And so here we have a child in school, a woman who's being transformed spiritually and also is being empowered financially. As you teach one lady, encourage a lady to teach another lady. It's one person reaching another with a little that you have to bless them and to bring them in so that the cycle continues. And one person is able to reach another and before you know it, the whole community is being transformed. All right. Well, we as a church feel very honored that we not only get to support Jacaranda Ministries, but we also get to send a team to Kenya to work with them. And we that is what we have been raising money for all week. Our kids have been doing an incredible job, and it has been amazing. Um, if you don't know me, I'm Annie, and I have the honor of being our elementary director. And in addition to the creative arts stuff that I did this week, I also was in charge of our missions. And it... It has been a wild ride, let me tell you. And I will just want to prep you right now, parents. Um, I am about to announce who won our competition. We had a boys versus girls competition to see who could raise the most money for this mission strip. And I just want to let you know right now, it's probably going to get a little bit loud when I announce the winner. So just prepping you now. All right, well, we have raised an amazing amount of money, and it has been an honor to get to talk to the kids about missions. Um, we had Callie and Justice, who are two of our young adults who are going to the missions trip, be our representatives of our girls and boys team. So this has been an incredible week of raising money, talking about missions, and um, just community with them. So right now, kids, it's time. Who's ready to see who won? I'm ready. I don't even know. 
I don't even know who won, so this is a mystery to me as well. Let's put the totals up for the boys. This week, the boys raised a total of, on Friday, 97.25, totaling in... $394.61. Give the boys a big round of applause because that is no small feat. All right, and the girls this week on Friday, they raised $265.75 for a total of $785.26, making the girls our winners this week. Good job, girls. That is awesome. But wait, there's more. That means our grand total that we raised for our Kenya missions trip is $1,179.87. That is incredible, you guys. That is just beyond our wildest dreams. You guys really showed up and you really came out and you really, really helped us get to Kenya and get supplies for the team, send people out there. So that is amazing. What I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to pray for this offering, that it would be used well, and that it would um, just multiply in the hands of our team. So if you would bow your heads and close your eyes with me right now. Dear God, thank you so much for just the call that you put on these kids' lives to give and to give selflessly and to... Um, just show up for you, God. We are so grateful that they were able to raise this amazing amount of money, God. We do not take it lightly, nor do we take the responsibility of going into another country um, and sharing about you lightly. I pray that this money would be a blessing to those who need it, a blessing to our team, a blessing to the people that we meet. I pray that while we're there um, and doing our art camp, God, that it would bring joy and it would bring life and it would just... Um, Make the day of the kids who are attending, God. I pray for our team. I pray for safety. I pray for health. Um, and I just pray that you would use them to be your hands and feet on earth. We are so, so grateful that you have given us this call and this responsibility and this joy to go out into the world and to share about you. We love you. We praise you. And in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I have the pleasure of introducing Pastor Gabe, our next-gen pastor. So give him a big hand. I forgot to put the 50 cents back in the girl's bucket. Um, well, 50 more cents, so whatever that is, plus 50 cents. You guys doing good? You guys having a good morning? Are you glad it's not 907 degrees outside? Yeah, me too. Uh, I, my name's uh, Pastor Gabe, as Annie said. I am the next-gen pastor. I oversee uh, college students on down to infants, and I get to work with a great team of pastors and directors that kind of, that shepherd those students and those kids and those young adults. And I just love being able to be a part of that team as they're teaching kids and students about who God is and who God created them to be. Um, but before we get going, um, I hopefully, hopefully every one of you guys got one of these little bookmarks when you came in. If you didn't, you can grab one on the way out. Um, but uh, the QR code on there has, uh, goes to our website and it, talk, it has a bunch of resources for parents and for parenting and just different age groups. So um, go ahead and make sure you go to that. There's a lot of information there to help you as a parent. I also have a free book. It's called Spiritual Parenting. Uh, Michelle Anthony is the author. It's a great book. Um, talks about milestones and just kind of different ways that we can uh, raise our kids. And I'll give it to the first one that comes up here. So anybody want a free book? Anybody? Parents? Any parent or any kid that... Oh. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll have more, I'll be out on the patio after service. You guys can see me, I have more books, more resources out there that I'd love to give you guys. Um, as, a, as, as the Next Gen Pastor, one of our goals is to be able to resource you as parents to, to be those spiritual leaders in your home and give you the tools that you need in order to accomplish that. It's, parenting isn't easy, parenting is difficult. Parenting doesn't really have a manual, and every kid is different. 
um, which makes it a little daunting when you think about it. <laughs> um, before we get going, I wanted to, to pray for us real quick. Father, we thank you and we praise you that you are sovereign. Lord, I pray that you would speak to us today about what it means to be a disciple, what it means to follow you, and what it means to be a parent that follows you. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, and thank you that you're such a good God. And all God's children said? Amen. Amen. Okay, so the, the, the sermon is titled Fearless Parenting, but um, it's not just about parenting, it's about discipling and being a disciple and what it means to follow Christ every, on an everyday basis. So if you don't have a kid, or you are a kid, or you're a student, or a high school student, or a young adult, this will pertain to you too, hopefully, prayingly. But as, as we move forward, I, I, I wanted to, because there's a lot of kids in the audience, I see some kids, I see some middle schoolers, high schoolers, let's have everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Everybody needs to participate, young, old, in between. Just stand up. Get your wiggles out. Everybody's got, well, especially me, I've got wiggles. Just kind of stretch, kind of, the chairs are comfortable, their new chair, I mean, their chairs, and stretch it out. Okay, you can sit back down. Um, that was it. I just wanted to make sure that you had time to stretch out those legs. Um, last week, uh, as I was kind of prepping for this, I saw, I saw a video, a pastor was talking about parenting, and um, it, like I had to, it was, one, it was a quick little like reel or something like that or TikTok, I can't remember. But it was one of those things that it's like I stopped and I'm like, well, I gotta find out who this guy is. I wanna watch the whole sermon instead of the, I don't know, 32 seconds or whatever it was on there. But it was about parenting. And one of the things that he said that really just stuck with me is, and I just wanted to share that with you guys as well today, that um, parenting is difficult, it's hard, but as Christian parents, or people that follow God and try to pa- raise their kids as Christians, it's not our job to save our kids. Yeah, it's not our job. We are not the savior, just to let you know, moms and dads. Thankfully, Jesus is the savior, right? We don't have to save our kids. We don't have to, you need to make sure. What we get to do as parents is we get to expose our kids and our families to who Jesus is. That's what we're called to do. And um, it kind of, as a, it kind of kind of takes the burden off a little bit, makes it a little bit easier, makes it a little bit less daunting when we think about it that way. Um, the scripture that we're talking about today is from the book of Deuteronomy. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and pull those out. The book of Deuteronomy is the, Fifth book of the Bible, it's the the last book of the Pentateuch where Moses wrote. I'll tell you just kind of a little overview about it. The Deuteronomy is after the Exodus, after Pharaoh, after the the, the Israelites crossed the Red Sea, it's, whoa, I just got really dizzy, hold on. I have have new hearing aids and I just took one out. (laughs) Okay, Um, sorry. Welcome with my journey of being old. Thank you. Welcome along. Come on, join me. <laughs> join me on the journey. Um, so it's after, after they leave, after the Israelites leave, they, they get to this promised land that, that God has been promising for hundreds of years. They finally get there. They, they send these guys in, these 12 spies in. They go check it out. They get to the promised land, and it's, it's great. They see these, you know, everything looks amazing. 12 spies come back to report, and 10 of them say, uh, heck no, we will not go because these guys are big and they're gonna kill us. We cannot survive. Uh, but two of them say, you know what? No, our God is big. Our God, God is greater and we can overcome this. Um, but because of their disbelief, because they didn't trust God, they were forced to wander the, de- the wilderness for 40 years. So 40 years later, they get through the wilderness. That generation dies off and... Moses is here, and this is the book of Deuteronomy. He's basically telling everybody, reminding everybody of the covenant they have with God, this covenant that God has with his people, and how they are to live their lives, the laws, the rules, the regulations, and how they are to worship, how they are to just live their lives. And 
So that's where the book of Deuteronomy kind of begins. In Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9 says this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And those words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk about them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down. When you rise and when you rise, you shall bind them as signs on your, your hands and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on the gates and on your gates. Deuteronomy 6. This is, um, it is actually, it's, it's one of the most important prayers of all of Judaism. They say this prayer twice a day, beginning of the day and the end of the day. And it's basically, it's what they believe and who they believe they are. That God is one and that they should love him with all their hearts, minds, and souls. And so it's really important. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to that a little bit, little, little bit later. But I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. Because here I am talking about parenting. Um, I'm a parent. So um, I have a parent... <laughs> I have three boys, and um, my wife is somewhere in the house. There's my wife. Yay, Sherry. She's... That wasn't a very big clap. I mean, that clap should have been just... You, it, everybody should be clapping. I'm sorry, you don't know my wife. If you don't know my wife, she just... Uh, I'm just trying to score points. Um, <laughs> But I have three boys. Uh, my oldest, Noah, uh, is 25, and um, I don't have hair now. Um, I did when I was younger. Um, but no, my, my, um, my oldest son is 25. He's in the Navy. That's, he, he, I have a new, new daughter-in-law. There they are. On, this is their wedding picture. Um, they got married in onesies, in Pokemon onesies, because... You know, if you think, if you're single and you think, there's nobody for me. <laughs> there's got to be somebody out there. Um, uh, yeah, like, like two pieces of a puzzle that were made for each other, fitting together. Um, I have a, my middle son, Zachary, just graduated college, and uh, his girlfriend, Kenzie, there. Um, they're in the house, too. They're... Over there, it's, I'm proud of them both. And then, of course, my youngest son, Jacob. Um, that's it, and that's, that, that picture is, that picture is exactly who he is and who God created him to be. Um, but I love my family, and they have partnered with me in ministry for the last 26 years. And it has been a blessing to be uh, to work with them and to see them just kind of serve as we serve together. But it's one of those things that it brings me joy as I come up here on VBS Sunday. I get to talk and to speak speak to you guys, and I get to I guess talk about my kids and what it means to be a father. But um, I, I told them from when I was younger, or when they were younger. Well, I guess I was younger too then that every time that I brought them into a sermon, I'd have to pay them a dollar, so they each get a buck today. And, um, but uh, in, my, in the, my 26 years of ministry, I ha I've never had a sabbatical until I came here. And I just wanted to say thank you. I just got back from my sabbatical. My sabbatical was at the end of last year and the beginning of this year. But thank you guys, Bridge Church, for allowing that to happen and my team that supported me while I was gone. But um, on that sabbatical, as I was away, I felt like I wasn't sure how it would be. Going into it, I'm like, ah, I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know how God's going to meet me. But from the very first week I started, I went to Hawaii to visit my sister, and I went on a silent retreat. And it was, words can't even describe where God met me. Um, being silent for a week is not the easiest thing for somebody that likes to be silly and goofy and lame. That's me. Um, but it's one of those things that just being silent and concentrating on what God has for you, listening to his voice. Every day he met me. I, went, I would be walking just down the road and just an overwhelming presence of, him, of who he was and who he called me to be. 
but I just wanted to say thank you. I haven't been able to come up here and stand in front of you and say thank you. So thank you, Bridge family, for that. Um, but on my sabbatical, I visited my, my brother who lives in North Carolina, and it made me really think about who, just who we were, because we are, my, my little brother's eight years younger than me, and, uh, but my, my niece mentioned something. She, she said something that we are, my brother and I are exactly the same. Our humor's funny, our, well, yeah, humor, our humor's funny. I'm really funny, guys, I don't know if you know that, but yeah, no. We have the same sense of humor, our, like the cadence, the way we speak is the same, but it made me think because I, ha I left the house when he was probably, I don't know, 11, and when I went to college, and maybe even younger than that, but the fact, it just made me really think about, start thinking about how, who I was and how he's very similar to me. He's a family pastor at another church in North Carolina, and it just made me really start to think, like, what is it that, that we lived through that, that made us who we are? What is it that, that caused us to be who we are? And we grew up in the church, and, and I was a pastor's kid, and any time the church was open, we were there, setting up chairs, pulling weeds, cleaning the bathrooms, uh, doing a lot of stuff, but it was one of those things that I was, it made me really start to think about who I was and who, how we became who we are. So I started looking into like family of origin things and where we come from and how, that, how we become people, how we become developed as from kids, from young ages to adulthood. I'm 51 years old and I'm an adult. Um, yeah, sometimes it's hard to believe the way I act and the way I speak, but... Um, it's one of those things that as I thought about it some more, I just thought family of origin, origin stories, and I, it, it amazes me how God uses those different incidences, where we grew up, who our parents are, who our family is, who we're surrounded by, to really form us into who we are. And I started thinking about like other origin stories, like Superman. Like Superman has an origin story. Every superhero has an origin story, right? They came from, a lot of them are orphans, which now that I think about it is kind of interesting. But like Superman, he, he came and landed on Earth and was a, like landed in middle of America, farm, raised by a farm family that put other people first and sac told him how to, that he needed to sacrifice himself for others. And then his nemesis, on the other hand, Lex Luthor, always wanted power. And you look at, like, Iron Man. He, he grew up and he realized that he was an arms dealer and he wanted to be a better person, so he became Iron Man. Pastor Ryan wanted me to do Aquaman, but Aquaman, that's kind of, like, who likes Aquaman? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> One, okay. That's not a good percentage. So I thought another, about a little bit more, and I'm like, okay, well, what about Captain America? He was a, his origin story is that he was a weakling, he was beat up a lot, he, but he still stood up for other people. And that's what he did. When he got this power, he stood up for other people, and that's who he is. He's got like an honest heart. Or Princess Leia and Luke and Darth Vader. Think about their origin stories. It's crazy how Darth, I mean, Darth Vader became that Darth Vader because he was, I mean, he grew up a slave. He like lost his family, all of these horrible things happened to him and that's why he went to the dark side. And then Princess Leia and Luke, Princess Leia grew up in, she got the best of the deal, let's be honest. <laughs> like she grew up in a palace, she grew up like she's a princess and Luke in the desert, a moisture farmer. <laughs> anyway, their origin stories kind of created them and kind of directed their path and who they would be. Um, it's a, it's, those origin stories are one of the strongest things that forms us. Think about it. Think back on when you were a child. Think about what really, who made you, how you were made, and how, you, how those brain things were developed. You, you became who you are because of that family, because of how you grew up. I, like in my, in my family, I'm a, I have like a, I wanna work, I wanna get things done, I wanna finish things, and I got that from my dad. He's a, he worked every Saturday at like six in the morning, pulling weeds. We were always pulling weeds at some point. I mean, we were like the gardeners or something, but we were always out there working hard, 
And, but for those of you, I mean, not everybody had a great family of origin. Um, some, some had a difficult story. Some people grew up in families. If you're one of those people that grew up in those families where you want to forget it or where it was harmful or destructive or abusive, just because that's where you grew up doesn't mean that's who you're, you'll end up. Because our origin story is just the beginning. As we grow older, as we learn about who we are and become who we are, things can happen, things can develop. But the greatest thing that can change who we are is when God breaks in. If you're one of those people that, that just felt like, I just want to forget that and move forward. God wants to step in today. God wants to break into those hurts and those those fears and those maybe anger and frustration. God wants to break in. God wants to heal. God wants to make that brokenness whole again. Um, actually, let's pray right now. Father, we thank you that you are a healer. Lord, for those that want to forget where they grew up or forget some broken relationships because of stuff that happened, Lord. Lord, I pray that your healing hand would come upon them. I pray that they would sense your presence and your peace. I pray that because you are a God of reconciliation, that you desire us as your followers to reconcile with those kind of things and those people. Lord, I pray that you'd give us the boldness to do that today in your name. Amen. Um, one of the things as to, to, to think about is that we're always being discipled. Even if you don't come to church, even if this is your first time here, even if you, you never come to church, you're being discipled by something. Something is, is making you who you're, you're following somebody. It might be a social media thing. Maybe social media is kind of guiding you and telling you, oh, I need to be like that person or I need to be like this person. Or maybe it's, you're really into sports, and that's what you're all about, but you're become, you know everything and anything about everybody that's on a certain team. We're, we're being discipled, we're being formed by something. Our kids are being formed by something. One of the things that we have to do, though, is make sure that as Christ followers, we are helping our kids along in that path as they are being formed by something. We need to, our desire as Christ followers is that we're an example for them to follow Christ and learn how to follow Christ. They're, kids are always watching us. I don't know if you know that. As, as somebody who works with kids and asks for prayer requests on a Sunday morning, some of those prayer requests are really interesting. <laughs> they're, they're, kids are like always watching. Um, one, one of the things that we've had throughout the years um, in, as kids talk about prayer and, and ask for things that, I mean, you, you gotta be, I mean, we've prayed for dead fish, um, goldfish, pets that have passed away, but it, it's, it's one of those things that as, as those kids grow older and as they learn about exactly what it means to follow Christ, they're watching you on what it, what it, what it means and what it looks like. So I was, I was working on, on my, uh, my master's thesis, and in some of the research, I, I found some things that really made me think about um, this whole thing of being a parent and being a father just a little bit differently. Um, John Chrysostom and Alexander of Hippo, two early church fathers that were talking about what it means to be, that's not really them, but that's kind of what they look like, that's paintings from them, of them. But, but, it, but they talked about that families are mini churches or micro churches. They're, so as fathers and as parents as, that, are, that have kids, it's our responsibility to help shepherd them and become who they are developed to be. So our family of origin can be a place that is healing, a place that is secure, a place where we can learn how to be a follower of Christ. Um, they are, like I said, they're, they're always watching. They, they, they emulate what you do. So if, you're, if you call yourself a Christ follower and you're out there in the middle of traffic, like sometimes we get angry with people that cut us off, which, you know, that happens. We're gonna mess up, that's okay. 
But one of the things that we need to also do is as they watch us mess up, they need to watch us figure out how to kind of get back on the right way, get back on the right path. So if you're gonna be angry at someone who cuts you off, they also need to see you apologize for, them, for that as well. They need to see what it means to be a Christ follower, follower in your everyday life. So they're watching to see what it means how, and how, you, how Christ's love and how Christ's change and discipleship plays out in you. They're watching to see how that does that. And you're an example exactly of what it means as a parent, so keep that in mind. A couple weeks ago, the la- actually the last couple weeks, Pastor Ryan has been talking in his sermons, and what, he had mentioned ethos, and um, you know, I'm like, yeah, I know, I know what ethos, me- ethos means, um, yeah. It means um, something to do with ethics, um, ethos, ethos. So uh, I thought I knew what it meant, and I kinda knew what it meant, but I kinda didn't know what it meant, so I had to look it up. So here, <laughs> here's what it is. Um, and, and then I, I kind of paired it with a family ethos. A family ethos is a fundamental, fundamental character or spirit of a family, the underlying sentiment that informs the beliefs, the customs, or practices of a family. The underlying sentiments that inform the beliefs, the customs, and practices of a family. What is that underlying belief for you guys, for your family, for your kids? What is that? What could it be? What, w- the desire is that we want God to be that person that, develop, that helps us inform our beliefs, our relationship with Christ. Um, as, as our kids grow older, they, you have a certain amount of influence when they're in your home. And as they're there, I, I, in, in my setting for this, one of the things that I noticed, and there's some, there's some stats that are out there that I wanted to, to point out to you. Um, when, when our kids are born, we have 963 weeks with them before they graduate and move on. When you think about it in week, weeks, it's, that's not a lot. When I, as I, as I, my kids were younger, we'd always hear people say, oh, time is, you know, time goes by so fast, you're going to miss the two-year-olds. What? Um, yeah, you're going to miss the age where they, you know, they cried all night. Uh, okay, but it, it is, it is really fleeting. It, 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 le- it goes by so quickly. When they go, get into kindergarten, 676 weeks left. Raise your hand if you're in kindergarten or you have a kindergartner. 676, you, that's how many weeks you have left. Junior high, 260 weeks. Raise your hand if you're a junior higher or if you have a junior higher. You have 260 weeks left to truly impact their lives where they're in your home before they graduate onto something next. And then this is the one that really got me because I was so excited when my kids learned how to drive. I was like, freedom! Because I was the pickup drop off. I was the go to take them everywhere. I even took them to work. So, I mean, it was like non, I mean, I, it, was, it was crazy. But I only had 104 weeks with them before they got to that point or when they got to that point. And when you think about that, 104 weeks is not a lot. It's kind of scary when you think about that. All, all three of my boys are now officially adults. And um, I'm actually a little bit more scared than when they were like three years old. Because it's like, oh, did I do it right? Oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm a horrible dad, where did I fail? Oh, I failed here and I failed there. And they're like, yeah, dad, you failed here and you failed there and <laughs> failed here. Um, no, I'm just kidding. They're really kind and understanding. <laughs> One of, one of the key things as, as we raise our kids and as, we, as they're still in our home is that we have to be intentional with the time that we have with them. Even as, um, even if you don't have kids, we have to be intentional with the time that we have with people that are around us, our family. And that could be roommates, that could be a family uh, of six roommates, or eight roommates, depending on where you live, or it could be um, just friends that you hang out with a lot. Be intentional as Christ followers. We have to truly be intentional because there's not a lot of time that we can really impact people's lives. As Christ followers, that's one of our goals is to be able to impact people's lives, to be able to say, hey, let me tell you about this guy named Jesus. And it doesn't even have to be that. 
you don't have to say the words, let me tell you about this guy named Jesus. But you can do that without using your words. You can preach the gospel. You can disciple people on what it means to be a Christ follower by just your actions. Uh, it's hard sometimes to always be thinking like, oh, I need to act like Christ would have acted. How would I respond to the person that is still at this green light and isn't moving for the last, it's been six seconds. Does she not know it's green? Ah! I mean, which happened a lot when I was, when my kids were younger. So it's like, okay, guys, we need to be understanding. Maybe she's having a bad day or, you know, or he. It's as, as we are transformed, as Christ transforms our lives, we have to show that to our kids. We have to show that to the people that are around us, to our family. And because Christ is gonna transform you. That's, that's not a question. If you are truly seeking after him, you're gonna be transformed. You're gonna be a changed person. Show your kids that you're changed. Show your family that you're changed. If you're a kid and you came to VBS, you came to Mega Skills Camp and you came up here and prayed, I wanna follow Jesus, show them that you're different. Some of you might be thinking, well, how do I do that? I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to do that. Um, Deuteronomy, that verse that, that we started with, that, those verses that we started with says, five through nine says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be in, on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as, sign, as a sign on your hand and, you shall be, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. You shall write them on doorposts of your house and your gates. Your neighbors should know. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the house that, the, that those that the people that go to the bridge go to. Um, oh yeah, they, you know, they always, they're always outside and they're always wanting to talk and, and there should be something different about your house compared to other people's house. My house compared to other people, and it's not. Mine, sometimes I just wanna drive in the hot driveway, forget that my neighbor's out getting his mail, which is right in front of my house, and sneak in. Sometimes it's just like, ah. But God is calling us to more than that, more than just being about ourselves. And it's hard sometimes to think about that. Um, my mom, growing up, used to put up little notes, like little post-it notes with scripture everywhere in the house. That's one way that she kind of helped us develop and love the word of God. Um, another way um, that she helped um, me to develop is, um, it's kind of actually, now that I think about it, it was a little bit embarrassing. I didn't want people to come over and, and spend the night because uh, my mom would always, she would wake up like at oh dark 30 and she would be praying in her room and, but, and she wasn't a quiet prayer. She would pray loudly. She'd be lying down on her face and crying for her family. And, dear God, please help Gabe. Please help him. But it was, like, embarrassing to me because, because like, I couldn't invite people over. Um, but it helped me develop a love for talking to God. And that, that whole thing of just another way to do it, of just praying for your kids. Another way is my father-in-law often, in the middle of conversation as we're driving, would just, like we're talking about, oh yeah, the weather is amazing and you know, the, the surf was great last night and, and then he would just randomly start praying. Not about the surf or the weather, but like something happened in his mind where he thought of somebody, somebody came to their, his mind and he would just start praying. But he would pray in front of me and it's just like being able to talk to God anywhere you are, wherever you are, doing that in front of your kids, around your family, them realizing like, oh, this guy talks to God, that's kind of, Hmm. it's kind of a good thing. Because that's what we do when we love somebody and we have a relationship with them. We talk to them. And we don't keep that away from our kids. Deuteronomy 6 says, these words, God's word, shall be in your heart. They should be transforming who you are and who we, who we have become. 
Teach them diligently to your children. Talk about them in your house, not just at church, not just as you're coming to church or leaving church, but it should be part of our everyday vernacular as we're talking about who God is in our house, as we walk along, as we're driving our kids to and from work, to and from school. Have those conversations, God conversations. When you lie down and when you rise up, we should be constantly talking. God is calling us to constantly talk about him to others and the great good news that he's done for us, the transformation that he's done within us. As the band comes up, um, I want you guys to think about as they're playing this song, it's talking about the goodness of God and how he shaped our life. Think about how he's shaped your life. Think about the, how he possibly can shape your life. If you come from a, maybe a background where you, don't ha you haven't come to church, or you don't know a lot about church or a lot about God or you've heard some things about God and you're not sure, think about the words of this song as they're playing because God can transform your life and his desire is that lives are transformed because of the relationship you have with him. Thank you. with me so sing about how good God is.
are so grateful to you. And God, as we go this morning, we have been encouraged to just share how good you are. Thank you, Father. All right, well, I think it's only appropriate that we end our Mega Skills Super Sunday by singing our Mega Skills song one more time. Yep. So let me see you. We're going to do some moves and we're going to jump around.
week. Have a blessed week. Thank you for having your kids. Thank you for putting up with us this morning. I'm being a little hyped up. Just have a wonderful week. And there's a team that is supposed to do a teardown um, um, on stage. We're going to come right now and help out. <laughs> Thanks. Have a wonderful week, guys. And outside, don't forget there's food outside, so don't forget to enjoy that and enjoy all of the skills tables as well. Don't forget to meet all of them over out there for that. Thank you.